So today I thought I'd do a short video because I'm currently making a lock, an early medieval lock um, from a small box. Now there are a number of these been found and the locks all work in slightly different ways but the principle is broadly the same between them. Um, what we have here, we're actually inside the box at the moment, so this is the lock plate from the front of the box. So usually you only ever see that side from the front when you're looking at something in a, a finds cabinet in a museum. So the way it works inside is that as you close the lid, like that, there will be an object like this hasp here fastened to the outside. So as the lid closes down, the hasp, you see there, there's a little tab on the back of it that comes through the hole like that. Okay? So when that's in place, to keep it in place, there's a little sliding bolt like this one. But in effect, it's going to be a little bit tricky with one hand to do. In effect, that pushes it all the way across there and captures it now. Let me just move the camera in, you see? Now that's now captured, and this you can no longer open the lid of the box, it's locked in place. So, how do we open and close that sliding bolt? Obviously, I just pushed it close with my hand, but obviously, that's not done uh, with your hand, it's actually done with the key, which also, in many of them, is part of the handle mechanism. So, this actually works with this unusual uh, feature of the bolt here on this one. So, as you can see, it's sort of a spoon shape, it's dished. Uh, there's a slot in the middle of it and two holes and then behind it you can see these two steel springs. Now the components of these boxes are most frequently made out of iron and steel. Um, obviously this, the springs themselves have to be a very springy steel. Um, and what happens is those springs, they're angled slightly, so they actually they project in, into the inside of the spoon. And that actually present, prevents this from being pulled backwards. So I can't now unlock that box. The only way to do this is to take a key and many of you have seen keys like this. Sometimes they've got a prong either side. Sometimes they'll have two or three prongs on the bottom. And that just relates to how many of these little holes there'll be on the, the, the sliding bolt on the back. Now this gets passed through from the outside here. So just come around to this piece. And this comes right the way through inside the bolt. It then gets turned and those two little holes there, those two little prongs, sorry, go through the two little holes. And I hope you can see now that as I pull this towards the lock plate, I can actually depress down. Sorry, it's just taking its time focusing. I can actually pull those springs down and it allows me to slide the bolt backwards and forwards. So in effect, I can lock and unlock the bolt. Now, what I have to do next on this one, of course, is to, to rivet this bit free so it doesn't bounce around too much. I'll put another little bracket on this side to keep the bolt nice and strong. And then I'll have to cut a rebate in the wood of the box to allow room for this mechanism for the key to pass through. And then polish and finish it all off and fit it to the box itself. So I hope that was useful. It perhaps explains some of the complex mechanics inside them. I think they're really fun little objects. Um, they are, however, a bit of a pain and quite time consuming to work on. Thank you very much.